orders sack of former chairman of the presidential task force on pensions reform abdul rashid mayna just as head of service of the federation denies his purported reinstatement nigerian governors seek to change public perception of how they administer their states older persons speak on their experiences as the world marks day of the aged and tourism set to receive a boost as Calabar prepares for carnival. Good evening and thank you for joining us on NTA Network News. I am Elizabeth Barrow. Also on the news tonight is Jennifer Igwe in Lagos and Suleiman Abdullahi Brigachkun. President Muhammad Buhari has ordered the disengagement of the former chairman of the Presidential Task Force on Pensions Reform, Abdul Rashid Mena, from the Federal Civil Service. Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishina, announced this in a statement. A memo has also been sent to the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, demanding a full report on the circumstances that led to the recall of Abdul Rashid Mena and posting to the Interior Ministry. The report, according to Mr. Adishina, is to be submitted to the Chief of Staff, to the President. Now, the controversy surrounding Abdul Rashid Mena has been a long-standing one. After a lull for about three years, it has resurfaced. Adepola Brooks in Sunday reports. It was in 2013 that the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC declared Abdul Rashid Maina wanted for his role in over 2 billion Naira pensions biometric scam and he has remained at large after the charges were fired against him and his accomplices. The news of his reinstatement was made public when a press statement from the office of the Minister of Interior denying responsibility for his recall to fill a vacancy created following the retirement of a director handling the human resources in the ministry. The minister blamed Maina's recall on the office of the head of the civil service of the federation. In a swift reaction, the head of the civil service of the federation, Winifred Oyoita, said the reinstatement and posting of Abdul Rashid Maina never emanated from our office and that it is totally erroneous and misleading. President Muhammadu Buhari, known for his 100% anti-corruption fights, immediately directed the disengagement of Maina from service. The EFCC has now relaunched a manhunt for Maina, who was sacked in 2013 and placed on the wanted list of international police, Interpol, in 2015. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju says Africa loses over $50 billion annually to illicit financial flows. The Vice President said this at the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative Conference in Jakarta, Indonesia. He said most of these illicit flows are perpetrated in the extractive sector through companies with hidden ownership. Musa Baba Ali reports. The Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative the International Beneficial Ownership Conference is discussing issues relating to hidden ownership of property in extractive industry. Danger to most countries. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo identified how the menace of hidden corporate ownership costs developing countries $1 trillion yearly. Most of these illicit flows, he said, are perpetrated in the extractive sector and through companies with hidden ownerships. Our own lived experience has shown clearly that anonymous corporate ownership could serve as vehicles for masking conflicts of interest, corruption, tax evasion, money laundering, and even terrorism financing. But this is not just a developing world problem. We live in a more interconnected world, and anonymous companies have footprints and tentacles that do not respect the developed 
developing divide. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo declared that Nigeria will remain on board the EITI and the ownership transparency train because they align with Nigeria's priorities and will help to advance the electoral mandate to fight corruption, combat insecurity, and grow the economy. He emphasized the need for laws passed in some developed countries on illicit financial flows to cover the destinations of the stolen assets. Minister of Solid Minerals Development, Coyote Fayemi, and that of State for Budget made a presentation at the conference. A roadmap for beneficial ownership disclosure in the extractive sector had been developed through a consultative process and is already being implemented. About 300 world leading experts are attending the conference. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. The judiciary will continue to live up to its constitutional mandate through correct application of the law, as well as supporting regulators in the nation's oil and gas to ensure growth and stability to the sector. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen, stated this in Abuja at the opening of a two-day workshop for judicial officers with a theme, enhancing the quality of judicial services in the petroleum sector. Chukunonso Mwabeze reports. The workshop, which was at the instance of the Petroleum Technology Development Fund, PTDF, in collaboration with the National Judicial Institute, is geared towards exposing judicial officers to changes within the legal and technical aspects of the oil and gas sector in Nigeria. Declaring the workshop open, the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onohen, says the recent innovations in the oil and gas industry will introduce new legal framework that will impact the quality of justice delivery. As such, it is necessary to acquaint judges with the rudiments of the sector in order to better prepare them for inevitable disputes that may arise. It is my utmost belief that the synergy between the National Judicial Institute and the Petroleum Technology Development Fund will record phenomenal achievements most especially by expanding the knowledge base of our judicial officers in the areas of oil and gas law, as well as being part of an extensive effort to support growth in the sector. The regulatory framework for the oil and gas sector remains fraught with the need for modernization in order to address emerging trends and threats that face the sector. The all-important fiscal framework legislation is being processed in the National Assembly, including, of course, the host community participation legislation. At the end of the day, all these legislations will end up before your lordships for one form of interpretation or adjudication. That's why we thought it is really imperative for this event to take place. The workshop is expected to bring to the forefront some salient issues within the country's oil and gas sector, as well as the means of resolving them expeditiously. In Abuja, Chukunon Songwa Bweze, NTN News. Nigeria has joined the rest of the world to celebrate the International Day of the Agent with an appeal for a review of the national policy for the agent. Basi Ita Ipan reports that older persons spoke on their pains and shared their wealth of experience. Aging has become a global phenomenon with steady increase in the number of the older persons, especially developing countries. In Nigeria, statistics from the National Population Commission shows growing population are 3.3% resulting in 9.7 million older persons by 2020. This exit youth within ages 15 and 24. Unfortunately, experts say K for the older persons is declining. Our older persons in Nigeria, we must find a way to ensure that as people age, they still remain functional. Um, we are here to also contribute to the draft on the national policy on the aging. And we believe that um, the ministry is going to involve us Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, represented by the Permanent Secretary, said Nigeria chooses a day to draw attention on the need and potentials of the aged since the Global Day falls on Nigeria's independence. Tapping the talents and contributions of this category of persons and the implementation of the 2030 Agenda by ensuring that no one is left behind. The argument is that there is no policy 
um, how do you build something from nothing? The older person stressed the need for policy documents to be put right and for budgetary provisions to take care of the need of the older persons. Basi Taipan, NTA News. President Muhammadu Buhari will depart Nigeria on Tuesday for Niamey, Republic of Niger, to participate in a meeting on common currency for the West African sub-region. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adishina, indicates that the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adoshun, and Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, will also join the President at the meeting. Still to come, Nigerian governors want the public to change their perception of how they run their states. We'll be back in just a moment. This is your playground. Get free 200,000 Naira preloaded on the new Jumbo Sim. Yes, 200,000 Naira. It's massive. Now every Sim is a Jumbo Sim. Get it. Use it. Flaunt it. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. Availability. Check. Confidentiality. Check. Integrity. Check. Transformation in action. The six years of Governor Abdul Aziz Abubakar Yari in Zamfara State clearly manifest good governance and foresight. In fact, transforming the agrarian state to the promised land. Welcome to Zamfara, a state being governed by a visionary and dynamic leader whose magic finger is touching every aspect of human lives. No wonder Abdul Aziz Yari is being referred as agent of Buhari's change mantra. Yari is bringing development closer to the Zamfara people and the nation at large. Zamfara, the pride of the nation. This message is brought to you by Iowa Media Group. This is the game I've been waiting for and I get a headache. But I remembered mom's advice. When headache strikes, I always trust Sudrex. Because Sudrex acts fast to relieve headaches. Sudrex, win your day. Four years ago, we're told Ndi Anambra that it's forward ever and backward never. Today, we've delivered a better Anambra. Our homeland is safe and secure. Our hospitals are better and our capital city more beautiful. Workers are paid on time. Agriculture is all-time high. We've improved infrastructure and have been outstanding in education. We've united warring communities and created religious harmony. We delivered 181 projects in 181 communities based on their needs. Little wonder, we've attracted over $4 billion investments inflow, creating jobs for our people. We did all this when our nation is in recession. Don't you feel better now? Being Onyanambra, it's better today. Let's vote for a greater tomorrow. Vote Abga. Vote Willie Obiano. Better today, greater tomorrow. Give me the value pack. <clears throat> You do great value shopping. Absolutely. I'm a champion at getting value. Then you must have bought the Hapik 200 ml. Why Hapik when I have this? Even after applying them 10 times, they won't give a sparkling clean toilet. Impossible. Challenge. The target and bleach can't give a sparkling clean toilet even after 10 times. But Hapik 200 ml gives a sparkling clean toilet at one go. Wow. Hapik 200 ml. Real deal. <laughs> Now only 200 Naira. My country people, I salute on My name is Natsin My name is Nasayid from Kimala. We're going to go now. NHIS. 
National Health Insurance Scheme. Mm. One of the things what we do for NHIS. Now to promote everything we know they allow now get better care for hospital. Our president, Muhammad Buhari, he don't take and say all of us in Nigeria will deserve a good health care. Primary health care centers don't they everywhere we cannot go register because if you sick you can't go any hospital and they're not going to treat you or take care of you you see the number and the email address only for the screen call us we get to go and get people <laughs> they go take action immediately in the shires, in our our own. Own. national health insurance scheme <laughs> easy way for everybody to get confirmed health care the Registrar, Chief Executive, Management and Staff, National Business and Technical Examinations Board, NAPTEP, cordially invites the general public to the opening ceremony and symposium to flag off the celebration of NAPTEP at 25. Theme, TVET, a veritable tool for sustainable manpower development and increased access to higher education. The journey so far. Chairman, Chief Host, Malam Adamu Adamu, Honorable Minister of Education. Guest Speaker, Professor Anthony Anwuka, Honorable Minister of State for Education. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency. Mr. Godwin Obaseki, Executive Governor Edo State, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty Omonobane do Ukwa Kolokolo, Oba Ewa II, Oba of Benin, Chairman Session 1, Dr. M. A. Kazare, MNI, Executive Secretary MBTE, Chairman Session 2, Professor Ishak Olaruwaju Oloyede, Registrar Chief Executive JAM, Vate, Thursday 26th, October 2017, Time 9 a.m. Venue, NAPTEP National Headquarters, Ikboba Hill, Benin City, Edo State. Professor Ifoma M. Isugo Abani here, Registrar Chief Executive, NAPTEP. Host, Announcer. This must be one of Mother Nature's greatest gifts. But there's something else it gives us. When we see such beauty, we want to share it with those we love. That's what LG wants you to see. Just what we see now, through our technology. LG OLED TV. Do you know that the Nigerian police now operates in the best international practices of policing? Do you know that the Nigerian police has been restructured to be more accountable and responsive to all your security challenges? Now, what the police demand from you is your trust, your collaborative efforts by providing necessary information about criminals and their activities in your neighborhood. Be vigilant to achieve our creed as we promise. We shall police the country based on international core values of policing with integrity. We shall ensure that rule of law prevails in our actions and activities. We shall respect diversity, display courage, show compassion, and demonstrate professionalism. We shall operate within the principle of democratic policing. We shall shun corruption and we shall make Nigeria safer and secured under the leadership of IGP Ibrahim Otum Idris. Let the wind of change blowing across the country chase away crime for the benefit of our society. Yes, the Nigerian police says this change must come with peace and tranquility. This message was brought to you by the Public Relations Department of the Nigerian Police Force. The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! The winning energy and great Milo taste, now ready to go. Milo! Um, hello, um, I just got back from the States and um, I need a SIM so I can have a number. you need. If you join them to end, you go enjoy bonus bracket. What's bracket? She eh, only bonus wouldn't give you, you go fit to do anything you like with them. Chatting, no, browsing, no, texting, no, calling, no, to any network for Nigeria and no condition at all. Completely free dot. Everything you buckle. What's buckle? If you buy the charge card 100 naira, eh, they go give you 600 naira. If you call the charge 200 naira, as a big baby that you is now, they will give you 1,200 naira. Hey. Hey, Rosie, I'm like, show me the way now. Get an MTN SIM, register it, and get six times of all your recharges every time you recharge and much more. So you be here, you you got the phone line. on a package. <laughs> MTN, everywhere you go. Sabi and Mekuna.
a plan well well. Know the facts. Modern family planning methods are safe and effective. You and your partner can plan when to have a child. Talk to your partner. Let them know you support using a modern family planning method. Go! Get a modern family planning method today. There's a method that is right for you and your partner. No. no. Talk. Go. Go. Get, get it, it together. together. Get, get it, it together, together for a brighter, brighter future. future. This Get It Together campaign is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Health. Thank you for staying with us on NTA Network News. President Muhammadu Buhari has challenged media handlers of state's executives to embrace the culture of using facts and figures in promoting their principles. President Buhari stated this in a message at the opening of a conference organized by the Nigerian Governors Forum for Executive Media Handlers in Abuja. Anthony Fawson reports. President Muhammadu Buhari's address at the opening of the conference was delivered by the Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohamed, who said, with naysayers looking the other way and not appreciating the achievements of government using facts and figures is a sure way of making them keep sealed lips because the citizens will be well informed, while they will have no basis for unwarranted comments aimed at disinforming the people. Never before have these evil twins of disinformation and fake news permeated the public space as they have now and make no mistakes about it. They have become potent weapons in the hands of the opposition. Using facts and figures, the president listed his administration's achievements in ending fuel subsidy, saying, for instance, between 800 billion and 1.3 trillion naira was paid as subsidy annually with an attendant product scarcity. While since this administration came on board, no amount has been paid for subsidy, yet all products are available at competitive prices. The president added that in 2011, the sum of 3.7 billion naira was paid daily. In 2012 and 2013, a daily payment of 2.2 billion naira was made. And in 2014, 2.5 billion naira was paid as subsidy daily without commensurate product supply. In the area of power, the president said, as at May 2015, available power at Nigeria's grid was a paltry 2,960 megawatts with a transmission capacity of 5,000 megawatts and distribution put at 4,000 megawatts. As at 4th of September, the available power that can be put on the grid is 6,619 megawatts with a transmission capacity of 6,700 megawatts with distribution standing at 4,600. Barely one week after, power generation has reached an all-time level of 7,000 megawatts. In 2015, the president added that the sum of 18 billion naira was budgeted for roads, 5 billion naira for power, and 1.8 billion for housing. This is a far cry from the present administration's 198.25 billion naira for roads, 91.2 billion naira for power, and 71.559 billion naira for housing. A situation that has cut down the huge debt being owed to contractors who have in turn reopened their closed work sites. On the economic front, inflation, he said, has dropped in eight consecutive months. Foreign reserve gone up to $32 billion from $24 billion a year ago. Expressing satisfaction with the rate at which Boko Haram has been degraded, he said the same vigor is being pursued to address headsman farmers' clash, kidnapping for ransom, and other crimes. Today, Boko Haram has been so degraded that it lacks the capacity to carry out any organized attack while also is increasingly using the capacity to even attack some targets. The conference is being attended by media aides and information commissioners from across the country. In Abuja, Anthony Forson, NTA News. And it was an opportunity for media handlers of governors from the 36 states to share knowledge on how to change the negative perception of governors in the country as they converge on Abuja for a media conference organized by the Nigeria Governors Forum. Adebola Brooklyn Sunday brings us the details. Most of the thing he does, he doesn't concentrate in the rural area. Some of them are doing well, some are not doing well. These are some of the views of Nigerians on their governors. Known as governors in Nigeria appears to be negative. 
It is in a bid to change this narrative that Nigeria Governors Forum organized the Conference for Media Handler of State's Chief Executives. In a couple of months, I mean, the whole terrain will change. You are going to find a lot of politicking out there. So we really have to... It's, um, uh, we really have to prepare ourselves for that. Participants took time to share their experiences and deliberate on the knowledge gained from the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, especially the use of facts and figures to back his statements. We are sometimes worried by the disinformation, the but we, set, we, we think this kind of forum will be very useful in setting the agenda straight. That? What I also find that is very important is that uh, you must be ahead of them to build positive narrative around your principal. Chairman this day editorial board Shegun Adeni gave participants the take home point. We as consumers of news, we should be more discerning. Is it true? Before we spread something, we need to get the fact. Is this thing true? Citizen participation, social inclusion, economic development are some of the policy focus of the forum. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. The House of Representatives has emphasized the need to make sustainable laws governing oil exploration across Nigeria. This came up when the House Committee on Environment and Habitat visited some communities hosting oil exploration companies in River State. National Assembly correspondent Ifai Ezumba reports. Some of the laws the committee says will check certification given arbitrarily without actually having the work done. The visit is to interact with production companies, host communities, see how exploration activities impact on the environment. The committee visited the National Oil Spill Detection and Response Agency in Austria. The project coordinator, Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, HyPrep, told the committee that they are looking at quick response to water supply to the community community and will strive to clean up Ogoni land as well as provide source of livelihood for the people. We have done the initial process to get water into the place. We've done the mapping as we speak. We know all the communities and where there are water facilities and whether they are working or not. The committee were also happily received by some community who also decried some activities of foreign oil companies and oil bunkers, which has devastating effect on the environment. And Part of the things that can strengthen this environment is to have sustainable laws. There's a legal framework on which you have the foundation on which these companies can host their platform so that we know the do's and don'ts. From Obogu Flow Station in River State, Ifani Isumba, NT News. The launch of the Nigeria Digest of Education, Statistics and Nigeria Education Indicators 2016 is evidence of the federal government's determination to strengthen the education sector through availability of reliable and credible data. This is the testament of the Minister of State for Education, Professor Anthony Onka, who has called for a second look at the constitutional provision which domiciled education matters in the concurrent list. Ogechi Paul covered the launch of the publications in Abuja Now Reports. The trend globally is for governments and organizations to plan with reliable and quality statistical data to enhance effective policy outcomes and implementation. In this regard, the Education for Change, a 2016-2019 ministerial strategic plan is in place to address data issues in the education sector. The public presentation of the Nigeria Digest of Education Statistics 2014-2016 and the Nigeria Education Indicators 2016 are eloquent testimonies. We want to make sure that we develop our education system using accurate and reliable data. And that's why what we're doing is very essential. The minister speaks to the issue of education matters in the concurrent list. We have to come at one between the state and the federal government to have a common drive in education. But the issue of concurrency is always driving a wage. We're in an era where you no longer postulate. We're in an era you should use accurate figure for planning. The other stakeholders attest to the importance of the publications, which provide records of approved registered schools in Nigeria, student population and other key statistical indicators in the sector. Ogechi Paul, NTA News. You're watching NTA Network News. Now let's go over to Jennifer in our legal center for more reports. It's over to you, Jennifer.
Thank you, Elizabeth. Good evening and a warm welcome to Lagos. 17 southern states governor have risen from a one-hour closed-door meeting with a resolution to uphold a united and indivisible Nigeria. The governors at a meet at a media briefing after the meeting through the Lagos State Governor, Akin Wumi Ambode, outlined other resolutions reached at the meeting. The summit also reiterated its belief in true federalism and devolution of powers. It restated its commitment to collaborate with one another for the growth and development of their economies. Governor Ambode disclosed that the next meeting of the governors will hold next month in Port Harcourt, River State. Details of this are expected in a subsequent bulletin. Now, the Lagos state government today brought the alleged kidnapper, Chuku Dimeme Onwamadike, popularly known as Evans before Justice Oluwa Tosi Taiwo of the Lagos High Court, Igboshere, Lagos, for arraignment. Vera Chimba has more. Chuku Dimeme Onwamadike, also known as Evans, is seeking an order of court to compel the police to charge him to court or release him on bail. In addition, pay him the sum of 300 million naira as damages for his alleged unlawful detention. Counsel for the Inspector General of Police and the Nigerian Police Force, Henry Obiaza, told the court that a Vance case has to do with murder, armed robbery and kidnapping, which are capital offenses. He argued that under Section 35, Subsection 7 of the 1999 Constitution, Evans' rights were not absolute, even though plans are on to charge him to court. He, however, urged the court to dismiss the suit for want of merit. Evans' counsel, Ogunbeje, urged the court to hold that the respondents had breached the law by detaining him since the 10th of June. He told the court that the proper thing to do is for the respondents to charge the applicant to court. After listening to the counsel's argument, Justice Ablazis Anka fixed the 29th of August for judgment. In Lagos, Vieira Chumuba, NTA News. Nigeria's fully integrated telecommunications solution provider, Globacom, says it has raised the bar in customers' appreciation in the country with the introduction of two major initiatives, Everyday Bonanza and Glow Jumbo Sim. Globacom's regional chief marketing officer, Ashok Israni, disclosed this at a media launch of the new offers in Lagos. Kenny Belige has the report. Every day, Bonanza, thousands of Glow subscribers are expected to win math watching prizes worth hundreds of millions in Naira. The prizes are flat screen LED TV sets, 4G light phones, refrigerators, generators, and microwave ovens. One lucky Glow subscriber will also win a brand new car every Sunday throughout the promotion. The second offer, the new Glow Jumbo Sim, comes with 200,000 Naira worth of free airtime. We believe that we are here to connect and enhance the lives of, our, uh, of the customers and Nigerians in general. To this effect, uh, we are announcing three mega uh, promos and uh, we feel that these customers will not only reward our existing customers, but it will also help us uh, capture more customers and market share during this dual tide series. Every 100 Naira gives you the chance of a slot. So if you have a thousand Naira, that gives you 10 chances of being in the draw. Yes. And um, you know all the things that you have to win, amazing things, just at the token of 100 Naira. In anticipation of the expected rush to its network as a result of these offers, Globalcom says it has comprehensive network to improve subscribers' experience. So it's totally committed to invest uh, on the network as well as continue to expand the network to carry this traffic out of the country to the world. The company also used the opportunity to announce the third Glow Free Data Day, which comes up on Tuesday, 31st October 2017. Subscribers will again be able to browse for free, upload, download, stream, and do lots more throughout the day. In Lagos, Ken Ebeluke, NTA News. You're still watching NTA Network News. We have more reports ahead after this timeout. Stay with us.
This is your playground. Get free 200,000 Naira preloaded on the new Jumbo Sim. Yes, 200,000 Naira. It's massive. Now every Sim is a Jumbo Sim. Get it. Use it. Flaunt it. The largest data network. Glow. Grandmasters of data. My people, how are they? You see, since what the Kongkuki Tala pay for DJ, now so customers, they launch and come my shit. Anytime when they go pay for something, we're concerned them. That's what they could buy my market. Okay, I won't pay my electric bill. And this grand not join. You see what I did tell you? For it and they pay. What do you do? What do you for? Why don't you go to the pay point agent for your area and enjoy better? Hey, hey, what else? Go to the pay point. Now in PayPal. Baby, to me, je, 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 Now you can find Coke Studio in your Coca-Cola bottle. Simply check under the crown for a code, dial star 505 hash and send the code to download exclusive music, coloring back tones and wallpapers of your favorite artists. Catch the show on AIT every Sunday by 6 p.m. Promo exclusive to MTN subscribers only. Coke Studio, where music meets. The family of Okon has been taken hostage by an evil looking creature. Seen your show for night, yeah big! Come in. Uh, my sister, I was there what was happening in the news. We must suddenly brought back your family. <laughs> you think you can freeze them? No way! Take away! When I'm at Fort I appear, my lady, I run for cover. I'm at Fort, I get some gel capsules, tablets for adults, and suspension for begin. I'm at that does not eat somebody, and I'm very easy to use. Are you are? Uh, remember how I'm at Fort, I get scratch feed to confirm the original, and I get some gel capsules. Yeah. <laughs> I'm at Say no to malaria, yes to life. My promise to my child I am not your friend. I'm your mother. I will stalk you debate you and hunt you down if I have to because when it comes to protecting you there's no such thing as too tough that's why every night I insist on Baygon multi insect killer for tough mosquito protection before bedtime so I know my loved ones can fall asleep protected S.C. Johnson a family company go my sisters I got some special discount on data no mind now, my sister. I will give you cheaper data. Aha, sister. Now we get your gonga data for here. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Oh my God, everybody we enter. There's no need to rush. Now, so there's more than enough data for everyone, eh? Pepe them gang. Now, so you have Pepe, I've your robot, Pepe, then the other for the gang. Excuse me, ladies first. It's free data time for all Glow subscribers. Tuesday, October 31st is Free Data Day nationwide. Get 200 MB free data and make something happen. The largest data network. Glow, Grandmasters of Data. It's okay, Mommy's here. Pampers Baby Dry, the driest diaper in Nigeria, has a unique extra sleep layer and locks wetness away better so your baby can sleep soundly all night. Pampers, wishing you love, sleep, and play. Today, Ariel will show you how to save more in these tough times. Why this powder? It's pretty good and money's tight. But Ariel gives better cleaning with less powder. Impossible. Come with me. Spaghetti sauce, chocolate drink. For these tough stains, I'll need one, two. And just one handful of Ariel. New Ariel gives better stain removal with less powder. Real savings. Area removes tough stains better in one wash. John is so cranky with this rash. It's a mainly baby suffering from diaper rash, especially when using cloth or low quality diaper instead of pampers. 
but money is so tight. It's true. But it's such a waste to spend so much on products to clear dapper rash rather than pampers with built-in lotion that helps prevent rash and keeps baby dry all night long. Even in tough times, our babies must come first. Nigerian Pampers, number one choice of pediatricians. Thank you for staying with us on NTA Network News. The tourism sector in Cross River State is set to receive a boost as the state government says it has set up several events and activities aimed at showcasing talents and culture of the people. Governor Ben Ayadi stated this while flagging of the Carnival Calabar Dry Run in company of Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed. Uruak Etim has details. While flagging of the ceremony, Governor Ayade, represented by his deputy professor Ivaris, who said the 2017 Carnival Calabar competition will be structured to bring value and excitement to the people. This year's Carnival will be mainly based, the main theme will be migration. As usual, will be bigger, bolder, and better. The five Carnival Band groups, Freedom Band, Master Blast Time, among others, displayed their skills as they dance around the carnival routes as part of their preparation for the main carnival in December. Minister of Information and Culture, Alajilai Muhammad, represented by the Permanent Secretary, Federal Minister of Information, Dikanes Grace Isukegbe, described Calabar Carnival as a unique culture of the people. She encouraged the state government to introduce Made in Nigeria products into the carnival costumes to promote African heritage. Director General National Council for Art and Culture, Otumba Lushegun Ronsewe, who described the carnival as a way to showcase talents as well as project the value of African heritage, said Cross River State is rated high in terms of event management and tourism. State Chairman Carnival Commission, Gep Ona, said this year's carnival, Calabar, will be bigger with the innovation introduced into it. So thrilled to be here. I want to pleasure that from my own side, we do our best to publicize what is happening in Calabar. Rivera's also speak on the essence of the dry run. So this dry run is to prepare our mind for the main carnival that is coming up by December. The carnival dry run serves as a rehearsal for the biggest street party. In Calabar, Udwa Etam, NTA News. The Standards Organization of Nigeria, SON, has continued its clampdown on dealers of fertilizer suspected to be adulterated in Makudi, the Benue state capital. This operation followed information from a preliminary investigation by the Department of State Services. Charles Abba reports. Farmers in Benue State have continued to complain about fake or adulterated fertilizer in various communities in the state. It is to arrest the situation that the Department of Security Services commenced investigation that led to the sealing of five fertilizer shops at the new garage in Makudi Metropolis. State Coordinator, Standards Organization of Nigeria, Samson Makolo, who led the operation, stated that the brand of fertilizer being adulterated is the nitrogen potassium phosphorus, NPK. He maintained that the mixed product has adverse effects on crop yields and soil quality. Samples were drawn to SON laboratory and another independent laboratory. The results on the fertilizer showed that all the NPK fertilizers were adulterated. Over 300 bags of assorted brand of NPK fertilizer products were evacuated from the shops pending completion of investigation by the DSS. This is the machine used by those suspected to be involved in adulterating and sealing the rebarked fertilizer products. In Makudi, Charles Abba, NTA News. More on NTA Network News as we join Suleiman in Kaduna. Over to you, Suleiman. Thank you so much, Elizabeth, and a warm welcome to Kaduna. The Nigeria Customs Service Katsina State Command has impounded some contrabands intercepted largely through Katsina Niger borders, valued at millions of naira. The controller in charge of operations Zombie, Osman Daikengari, displayed the seized contrabands before journalists at the command's headquarters in Katsina. The federal government has been working round the clock 
to make local rice available, thereby creating jobs in the agricultural sector. But activities of smugglers are making the effort fruitless, as they always devise new tactics to carry out their nefarious act. However, persistent effort by the Nigerian custom these days has resulted to interception of so many exotic vehicles, assorted consumables and clothes that are illegally imported, as was the case in Kesena. Part of the challenges we have the smuggle a lot, then the local communities go ahead as if these things belong to them. If you are cost and uh, detain any vehicle before 10 minutes, you see villagers coming even to attack our mobile officers and men. This is the second time this year the Nigerian Customs Service is parading to the public impounded contrabands valued at millions of naira at its Kasana command known for smuggling activities. In Kaduna, I am Muhammad Umar Ajingi, NTA News. The advocacy for local government autonomy in Nigeria has received a boost as the Nigeria Union of Local Government Employees restates commitment to ensuring autonomy for rapid socio-economic development at the grassroots. National President of the Union, Ibrahim Khalil, restated the Union's commitment when he led members of the Union to Kaduna State House of Assembly to present their position on local government autonomy in the ongoing constitutional review exercise. Ahmad Umar Kudan has the details. Members of the union from 23 local government areas of the state converge on Murtala Muhammad Square for a rally soliciting support from various stakeholders in actualizing local government autonomy in the country. While presenting their position to the state legislature, the national president said they were there not to demand for wage increment but to ensure inclusive governance by revitalizing the local government system which he said is the missing link in Nigerian democracy. When our constitution sufficiently protected local government system and guaranteed its existence as a democratic structure, the operators of state decide to conduct election when it's convenient for them. He added that local government is relevant and strategic even in developed countries Hence the need to strengthen it. Speaker Amina Abdullah Shagali, represented by Chairman House Committee on Due Process, Marcus Zarmayari, said the House is working on a bill to reform local government system in the state. The Speaker said, as far as the Administrative House Assembly is concerned, anything that has to do with the grassroots, we are in support of it. The advocacy rally is a nationwide initiative in support of local government autonomy in Kaduna. Ahmad Umar Kudang, NT News. And with that report, is back to you, Elizabeth, for more on the network news. Thank you, Suleiman. And we're not done. There are more reports just ahead. Stay with us. The Statistics Committee on Sports invites stakeholders to a one-day public hearing on a bill for an act to repeal the Nigerian Football Association Act, CAP N110, laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and reenact the Nigerian Football Federation Act to provide for the administration and management of sports in Nigeria, establishment of sports institutions and facilities, and a sports for development, and to encourage and promote drug-free sports and recreation in Nigeria, to establish the Nigerian Sports Anti-Doping Agency, responsible for carrying on the functions of Nigeria Anti-Doping Organization as enshrined in the World Anti-Doping Code in accordance with the various international standards. Date, 25th October 2017. Venue, Conference Room 028, House of Representatives, Abuja. Time, 10 a.m. Bukar Goni, Chairman, announcer. Every day, I see patients who come to me suffering from infectious diseases caused by germs, from typhoid to diarrhea, flu, cough, an average human being comes in contact with over 1 million germs daily when we use the toilet, from our door handles, from other surfaces, we transfer to others without realizing. That is why we recommend Dettol Antiseptic Liquid. Protect your family from up to 100 illness causing germs. Be Dettol Sure. Whenever pain occurs, you want quick relief. Try new Nurofen Express. It goes to the source of pain and gets to work in under 15 minutes. That's why Nurofen Express delivers fast and effective relief. New Nurofen Express works at the source of pain, fast. Being a mom is great, but when your child has a fever, you don't know what to do. I trust Nurofen for children to take care of my child's pain and fever. Effective relief you can trust. Like 
first share of 100 million naira with Malta Guinness. Find your code. SMS it with your name to 32011. 1 million naira plus cash and airtime prizes to be won every week. Malta Guinness. Let's go. Dettol team is visiting schools to teach children how to protect themselves from diseases. Do you know how we get illnesses like diarrhea, cough and cold? No. They are spread through gems on your hands. Your hands collect gems that causes diseases. You pick up gems from any surface like when you don't wash your hands after going to the toilet while playing. And then you can get sick because of gems. That's why you need to fight germs to stay healthy by washing your hands regularly with Dettol soap to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. Wash, wash, wash your hands. What you have to do is wash, wash, wash your hands. Dettol soap every day. Wash, wash, wash your hands. Helen! <laughs> your kitchen gets 10 out of 10. Thank you. This also gets a 10. Should we see the toilet now? Sure. This gets just one. It is clean. But not perfect 10. Better than my detergent and bleach? Impossible. Challenge? Try the new Apic 10X. Compared to bleach and detergent. Apic sticker formulation removes yellow stains times better. Giving you a sparkling clean toilet. Wow. Now you also take that? Perfect 10X challenge. Also available in 200 ml pack. The National Agency for Food and Drug Administration and Control, NAVDAC, is working to ensure access to safe, good quality essential medicines with the World Health Organization pre-qualification of Made in Nigeria pharmaceutical products, stiffer penalties for fake drug offenders with a review of NAVDAC laws, national, regional and international collaborations, cutting-edge technologies including the mobile authentication service the production and distribution of counterfeit medicine and adulterated food products have negative impact on our health and economy as a whole. I urge all Nigerians to support NAPDAC in safeguarding our health. God bless Nigeria. Let us support NAPDAC to win the war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products. NAPDAC, safeguarding the health of the nation. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama has debunked some alleged media reports on the extradition of 1,000 Turkish nationals at the request of the Turkish government. A statement by the special advisor to the minister, Sarah Sander, states in clear terms that there was no such agreement. Every individual of whatever nationality legally residing in Nigeria is guaranteed full protection under Nigerian and international laws. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has, pl has pledged to tackle what he called Japan's two national crises after a resounding election victory on Sunday. For this and other stories trending on the global scene, let's join Adu Adamo Alsu. Thank you and welcome to this segment of the news. We start from Namibia, where a diamond mining town that was previously not open to visitors has now been open to the public. This is meant to boost tourism and diversify the country's economy. The remote town of Urajimud held celebration this month to declare an end to its isolation from the rest of the country. Reports said that a new road has been opened between the Namibian town of Rishifuna and Urajimud and in a system where travelers had to get security clearance before entering the area. Fresh from a decisive election victory, Japan's Prime Minister, Shinzo Abe, has pledged to tackle what he calls Japan's two national crises, the military threat from North Korea and aging and shrinking population. The Prime Minister said at a news conference that he is committed to protecting the Japanese people's prosperity and peace from any threat. He said Japan's decreasing and aging population is the biggest challenge for his policy that aims at Japan's economic recovery from deflation. In Spain, a senior Catalan official has said authorities in the region will not follow orders from the Spanish government if Madrid moves to reassert control over the region. Spain's Prime Minister Mariano Rayo has announced plans to sack the region's government and curtail some of the freedom of its parliament. The Catalan parliament would meet on Thursday to decide on its response to the Spanish Senate. Finally, the bodies of at least 67 Syrian civilians, many summarily killed by the Islamic State group, have been discovered in a central town in Syria, retaken from ISIS 
by government troops over the weekend. The news of the gruesome find in the town of Kartayan in Hans province began to emerge first late on Sunday. That is it from this end. The news continues. <music> And talking sports, Nigerian beach volleyballers set for 2018 Commonwealth Games qualifiers in Sierra Leone. And world number 14, one Martin Del Potro, retains Stockholm Open title. Dane Desani is our guide on sports updates. <laughs>